everyone. Welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe making a little bit of fun of Toyotas, and of course, if you like beatbox on Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs. My name is Tyler. Joining me again, 421 episodes into this crazy, crazy adventure that we've been doing for the past couple of years is my good old buddy, Mr. Jimmy Jet. How are you, man? Good. I'm doing well. I'm uh, well rested, actually. So You are. I am. That must be nice. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I got to sleep in the last two days and the assistant had to wake up earlier and uh, go deal with things at the house because I had other obligations that took me away from the house mm-hmm. uh, at a later time, but I got to sleep in because of that. So it's been pretty cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So she's had to be at the house at like 8 a.m. to greet uh, some, like the, we're getting carpet today. Uh huh. So, but I had to come down here. So I got to sleep in a little bit. And nice. the other day, what, ha- what was going on? Oh, I had a meeting. Um, I started with a bookkeeping software. Um, oh. Not sure if I'm going to keep stay with it, but I'm going to mm-hmm. test it. Mm-hmm. And so I had a meeting at like nine o'clock and we had somebody coming in at eight. Oh, HVAC. We had our HVAC looked at. So gotcha. somebody, Ben, uh, don't worry about it. I had it taken care of. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we had somebody, the HVAC system went, got there at eight and I had a meeting at like nine or nine 30. So mm-hmm. I got to sleep in a little bit more. So yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> nice. It's been good, good past few days. Good. That's good, man. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? I'm life is way, way too hectic right now. So yeah. uh, I have too many things going on. I can't keep track of them all and I'm going crazy. Yeah. So. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how you do it, man. I, I really don't. I look you forward. You and like BG. Yeah. You guys are doing like nine things all at once. And Brennan's like, he kept always saying like, you need to do this, this, and this. I'm like, I don't have time for it, man. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do and I can't start a whole nother brand or a whole yeah. nother thing or a whole nother chapter in this. You know, it's like I've got my two things, you know, I got snail trail, which I'm not even doing at the moment for the most part, mm-hmm. snail armor, and then I've got life. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I, so <laughs> was, that's about all I can handle. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, yeah, I look forward to Tuesdays because it forces me to sit down and not work. <laughs> Not work, essentially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just sit down and chat with my buddy and record a uh, stupid podcast. So. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, there's some big things coming around the corner. I mean, the, the PSI pros, we have those in. I know. Is that um, mine right out there? I believe so. One of them is. Okay. Um, around here somewhere. Sweet. Our, we had our uh, designer, our digital media designer. <laughs> design the boxes. They turned out great. So they're fantastic. They're all turning out wonderful. We've been quality controlling every single one of them as they come through and they're all functioning. Awesome. Um, you know, I, I'm going to, I don't know if a lot of people know this about more Okay. But you guys literally check every single compressor that mm-hmm. comes through more and goes out to a customer. Yes. You guys get them in Mm -hmm. and you pressure check them. You make sure that the, like the ends are functional. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you do other things that I don't even know about, Mm -hmm. but I don't think people, I think that's something you guys can market and you guys could talk about. And I don't think other companies out there in the market that get a similar product to the one you have Mm -hmm. do that. I think they just get it and send it (laughs) Yeah, and they don't (laughs) make sure that, you know, the tops are tight and the cylinders compressing correctly and there you're getting the proper output of air and all these things that you guys actually put your hands on and double Mm -hmm. check for the customer. I am confident in saying that no other brand puts as much quality control into their product. I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we literally do that for every single compressor. So, um, we want to make sure that, you know, whatever we put out there is a good product. that's going to work for you that, you know, I'm, I'm super cheap, right. When it comes to buying stuff and okay. if I spend my money on something, I want to make sure that it's going to work. Sure. And if it doesn't work, I am the worst customer. <laughs> like personally, um, I, I really feel bad with companies that I deal with because I have very high standards in what I expect out of customer service and what I expect out of um, products working. And uh, if stuff doesn't work properly, I will uh, typically, I'm, I'm a bad customer. <laughs> sure. So I try and make sure that everything we do 
for Morphlate is up to my standards as a customer, which are, I think, unre- higher than unre- average. I think they're unreasonably high. I will admit that. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, I mean, we just, we, we understand that people work hard for their money and um, we don't want you to waste it. Like it shouldn't be wasted. You shouldn't have a shitty experience. And we try and make sure that we do everything we can to ensure that happens. So absolutely. Yeah. I think you guys can promote that more as a feature that more flight does that other people don't. Okay. Which is something along the lines of like what snail armor does, which mm-hmm. I'm failing at currently at <laughs> this moment right now. So it's a sort of a, what's that word where you, where you're uh do as I say, not as I do or <laughs> kind of that saying, uh-huh. but it's more of like, uh, you know, like, I am, I'm saying something that I'm not currently doing. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But I strive on snail armor to have all my panels in stock. So when somebody orders one, I ship it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Currently I'm out of third gen Tacomas, but I'm solving that today. So I'm going to pick them up. But I've, uh, you know, all my other customer or all not customers, but all my other competitors out there are two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. When you order a panel, it's two to three weeks to get the, for them to get you a panel. Yeah. I'm like, that is ridiculous. Yep. They're pretty much what they're doing is they're making them to order. Mm-hmm. Right. And yep. I'm like, no, I'll have the product in. And when you order it, I will send it to you. Yeah. That's funny. We're going to go on a big rabbit hole here about <laughs> oh. off-road, off-road businesses and back orders here. Yeah, we definitely can. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's, I 100% am on the same thing. If we end up going back order for more than a week, I get pissed. Yeah. And I get really stressed out. And, you know, sometimes there's not much you can do depending on your production processes, but yeah, it's, it, I, I agree. Like, I don't, I, I don't want to wait for longer than a week for my products. I, yeah. think, <laughs> I don't think that's right. Um, and so there's a lot of companies out there that, you know, will, um, again, if, and like for me, so here, so what we did on the pre-orders for the PSI pro is we did not charge anybody upfront. Yeah, anything. I think that's fantastic. There was no deposit whatsoever. Um, we don't charge you until we get the product in and ship it to you because I think it's wrong when companies do that. They, when they charge for a pre-order or charge for a pre-launch something, essentially what they're doing is what Ford did with the Broncos. They're getting a, an interest free loan from their customers. They're making you pay your money and then you pay the interest on it because you probably put it on a credit card of some kind. Yeah. And you're not getting the product for one, two months, probably until after that payment cycle on the credit card, which means you're either taking the hit personally on loaning out the money and the company, or you're paying interest on the credit card. And so you're giving the company a free loan. <laughs> for them to be doing businesses, which is in my opinion, not what companies should be doing. If they want to be doing business, they need to be, they need to make sure that they are supporting their own books and supporting their own financials or getting loans to do so. Yes. So yeah, that's a, just another, yeah, there's, there's I, another whole nother deep dive with businesses. I forgot, what industry. I, I forgot what I ordered, but a while ago I was doing something, I think for Samantha, mm-hmm. maybe it was for Bobcat. It was one for, for one of one of the rigs. And I ordered something from a, a company. I'm not going to name the name. And it was, they, I ordered it. Mm-hmm. And then I got an email the next day saying, Hey, thanks for your order. Just to let you know that we're not going to get this order in for six months. <laughs> wow. And I was like, after they took the money, after they took the money, yeah. after, I said, okay, thank you. Please refund me my money. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll either wait six months or I'm going to go buy it from somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's it's a it's a why scheme. even have it online? Yeah. <laughs> why don't you just say back ordered? Yep, just put a simple point. back order on it. Let customers make up their own mind, like because they want the money. Exactly, it's a scheme, yeah. and how companies are nowadays getting funding for their purchase orders at factories. Yes, you know who doesn't do that hmm. is Spartan Ropes. Spartan Ropes does not. I'll bring us, I'm bringing us Thank back you. around here. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah. Spartan ropes does not, he does, he uh, does everything himself. Um, really cool guy. Nye. And, um, he came out with a new product here. He did. So it's been yeah. fun. I, I got him actually, and he told me this idea about this product. Okay. And I got him in touch with one of our machining factories that we use for some of our Morphlight machining stuff. Okay, cool. And they went back and forth. I introduced them and then they when they engineered and designed a whole new product. Yes. It's super um, exciting. Mm-hmm. Pretty much 
the gist of it is it's a receiver uh, that you, it's a, a receiver? No, it's a, 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 a hitch re- <laughs> that goes yeah. into your receiver. Yeah, it's a hitched part that goes into your receiver that is made for a soft shackle. Mm-hmm. And so it eliminates the the standard bow shackle style. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the way that it does that is it has a bigger ID of a hole. Mm-hmm. And then um, it also has curved edges around it so that it won't snag or cut your soft shackles once mm-hmm. you stick that through the, the hitch, the receiver. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, whatever. It's got to have a better name than that. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, <laughs> what is the name? <laughs> Get us Sorry, one so we can answer these yeah. questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they turned out great. He uh, powder coated them. Powder coated or anodized? I forget which one. Um, in four different colors, I believe. Oh, cool. He's got some nice colorations on them. Uh, he does not have a neon green, though. Um, Nye. Nye. Well, I need a we can green solve one. that. I know, right? <laughs> just we take know it to our stripper. Coder. Yeah. <laughs> take um, it to our stripper, then take it to our powder coat. Go in there today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it's really cool. It's a new product. I so far I haven't really seen anybody that has made a receiver hitch specifically and explicitly for soft jackals. They very well might be out there, but I know that Nye engineered, designed these himself. And did all the destructive testing on them. So he has the working load limits and minimum breaking strengths printed right there on the receiver, on the hitch. Okay. Pretty cool what he's been doing with Spartan Rope since he took it over. Um, And we're going to have two of those to give away this month. And we have a bunch of uh, Spartan Rope soft shackles too. Yeah, we do. That we've been baking hoarding. and hoarding for something special. So we'll the we'll have two winners this month for the month of August for the giveaway for the snail squad. And uh, the two winners will win uh, the receiver hitch, uh, soft shackle receiver hitch uh, recovery point, as well as a Spartan rope soft shackle. So cool. Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic mm-hmm. item to receive. Yeah, it's about I want to say a total value is going to be around 150 bucks each. Yeah, something like that. That's cool. So, yeah. Cool thing. It's been fun to watch the design and I've just because I've been in the background of it, right? Watching uh, uh, come to life. Mm-hmm. And I love the product development process and the the thoughts and ideas that goes into product development. So it's been really exciting for me to watch this come to life and to be able to get to support him and give away two of what I think is a really phenomenal product. It's pretty cool. So, right. Yep. Uh, so that's the giveaway. Cool. All right. Well, I appreciate Spartan Rope. Thank you so much for uh, the giveaway items this month. And uh, next thing we have on our list is, are we going to do reviews or do you want to do voicemails next? Um, Let's do a voicemail because I think we have one from Donnie. Okay. Uh, Yeah. I know we have one from Donnie because I saw him on Sunday. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, oh man, it's a, it's a doozy. It's a doozy. Let's uh, see what Don has to say here. Jimmy and Tyler. Hi, Don. Hey, long time listener and 53rd time caller. Your buddy Rover Don here. I've been, uh, I've been traveling. I've been gone for like three weeks and I'm finally getting caught up. I'm surprised to learn that no one has answered your question about what is green laning. And the particular irony is, that roughly the time that you were posing that question, I was actually engaged in some green laning <laughs> in Wales. A rover, of course, nice. as one does. So basically, as far as I know, this is an English thing only, a term. They refer to old trails and routes that are public access. They sometimes run over private property. You'll find a lot of gates. Uh, these are go way back, some of them all the way back to Roman times. Uh, mostly it's like two track stuff from what I've seen. Uh, the bulk of it is in Wales, although there's plenty in England as well. And I don't know, I think there's a little bit in Scotland, although I didn't do any when I was up there. They run from very simple drive it in a car to super gnarly tight, narrow. You're going to take the side off on a shale wall sort of a thing. Um, there's no real rock crawling or anything of that nature, you will get plenty of water crossings. Uh, I had water on the floorboards of the rental several times, no problem there. But, I mean, I was driving a stock Defender 90 with 
ancient, hard, 31-inch uh, Goodyear MPRs on it Peasant. that were nearly bald. <laughs> and I ran some of the quote-unquote difficult trails. Only once did I run into something. I mean, just, that I couldn't get up and probably could have if I'd been willing to go with enough momentum. The uh, There are two types of routes on uh, the Ordnance Survey maps. One is called a boat, which I believe is byway open to all traffic. And the other is something like a unincorporated council road. I forget what it's called. There are also trails or routes that are only open to like pedestrians or uh, horses or something like that. But those two are basically, if they're on the map and officially, uh, according to local council, would effectively be like the local county open, they're, they're good to go. Uh, expect from what I've seen, uh, lots of pinstriping and uh, lots of water crossings, and they, yeah, it's probably a uh, good chance of mud depending on the season. But don't expect. Well, oh, he got cut off. <laughs> Google didn't want him to talk anymore. <laughs> did he call back? <laughs> he did not. Oh, which I was surprised about. I don't know if he knows that he got caught up, <laughs> cut off. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I wonder if he just kept talking and didn't realize it. <laughs> probably. But anyway, so I saw Donnie on Sunday uh, mm-hmm. over at Hustle Nuts house. Oh, nice. Yeah, random. But he uh, pulled out his uh, iPad, his tablet, and he actually showed me some photos of him green laning. Okay, yeah. Out there in Wales. And he had this, uh, a cool Defender, like 90, like he said, super small uh, wheelbase wise vehicle on 31s. And so he was, he described green laning to me, and I'll probably butcher it to some extent, but pretty much. What I got from it is it's like easements is kind of the way I see it. Okay. And it's a bunch of easements through public and private lands that are just a single tr- or like a double track road. Mm-hmm. Um, and could be a lot paved, of could be dirt. Primarily dirt okay. is what I, everything I saw was dirt. And it okay. was all very, for the most part, simple stuff. There was a few that were like it was a hillside and then right up to a fence. Mm-hmm. and the water had eroded a bunch of it. So you are at a kind of crazy angle uh-huh. going through some of those, but none of it's, you know, he did everything on 31 inch tires oh, you yeah. know, out there romping around. He said he went up a pretty gnarly spot and unlocked and he mm-hmm. was like, and that was the hardest thing that was out there. <laughs> nice. But it looked absolutely gorgeous. I mean, yeah. you're driving around countryside, middle of Wales, you know, in some parts of England in these massive green pastures away from the city. Mm-hmm. And it just looked beautiful. Yeah. So it looks like a f- random fun thing to go out and do if you're ever out in that area mm-hmm. to go get a vehicle and go green laning for a day. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. I did the uh, step one step down of green laning then, I guess. Yeah. The highway. Well, the highway. <laughs> Pretty much uh, in Ireland, there's cobblestone roads, the, for pretty much cobblestone roads. Um, and just, you know, they're super overgrown, no shoulders and the hedges are all yeah. like uh, coming onto the road. Sure. Right. <laughs> so really there's only a room for like one and a half cars on the road. Yeah. Um, and right behind the hedges apparently are a bunch of stone walls <laughs> oh. that you don't really see because the hedges are all overgrown. Right. So, um, while I was driving around in Ireland one time, uh, I had a bus oncoming. Oh man. I was like, Uh I don't know what we're going to do here. (laughs) So, um, I had to go over so far that I kind of ended up going up into the brush with the the rental car. And that's how I found out there's a stone wall behind the the, the hedges there. And I could have sworn that as soon as I hit the wall that I took the mirror off, but it was one of the folding mirrors. So nice. (laughs) I was like, Oh man, destroyed the mirror on this rental car. Luckily we got the full insurance, but yeah, I mean the, by the time we were done with the, when we got the rental car, there was pinstriping all the way down both sides of it. Uh And uh, when I gave it back, there was a big chunk of paint taken out of the mirror and more pinstriping all over. Definitely. So and the guy, the guys are just like, Oh yeah, that's normal. Don't worry about it. I was like, okay, (laughs) cool. (laughs) That works. Yep. So I did some mini green laning. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, urban green laning. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for calling in, Donnie. Mm-hmm. Um, I want, I actually would like to go green laning sometime. It sounds fun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, so the, yeah, we got that from Donnie and then we got some reviews because we have a big announcement. We do. We reached 550 reviews. 550, which means we're giving away a swag pack. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Yeah. So we'll do the uh, drawing for that 
next episode, next Thursday. Okay. So, yeah, that'll work because then we also have the giveaways for the month and all. That's true. Yeah, to do all that next Thursday too. So we'll do all those giveaways on next Thursday, but we did reach 550. So if you did not have a review in before 550, then uh, you're going to miss out on this swag pack. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, But the cool thing is you can get in before we hit 600 reviews because we'll do another swag pack at 600 and then another one at 650 and another one at 700. And then what are we doing at 750, Jimmy? We're giving away a set of tires Woo-hoo! from Yokohama. Pretty yeah, much yeah, any boy. tire that Yokohama makes, you can grab if you are the winner. Mm-hmm. So super stoked. 750 reviews. If you can figure out a way to leave more than one review and sneak in there with multiple reviews, you definitely are welcome to do so. Mm-hmm. And it gives you better chances to win a set of tires from Yokohama. Mm-hmm. I will say I was scrolling through the reviews to get to uh, where we've left off in reading the reviews. Okay. Uh, Wreck-It Rob has quite a few reviews. Oh, in cool. Here. So Wreck-It Rob Once we get won, to his, I think it'll be funny. He won the beard stuff from Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. That, what, that, what's it called? The Ancient... The Ancient of the Deep? Or? Ancient of the Deep. AO, yeah. AOD. AOD, yeah. yeah. Something, whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wreck It Rob won that. Wreck It Rob also drove up to Oregon recently and bought an F two fifty that has a red fender. Oh, <laughs> so I might be meeting up with him at some point to get uh, some parts for Clifford. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. So we got a couple of reviews here. So let's see here. Da, 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 da. Uh, this one's from Crawler D. Crawler D, thanks for writing in. Mm-hmm. It says, great podcast. Great Thank show. You, you guys Thank discuss you. what us Toyota guys like. Full wits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Ford <laughs> axles. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, next one is from Bubs the Builder. Hey, Bubs. It says, great content. Been listening for a while now. Trying to catch up. A ton of good info to help prepare for my first Rubicon trip. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, we have a few good Rubicon episodes in there about Rubicon history, the naming of the obstacles, and we even did a trip, uh, one about if you're traveling to the Rubicon, what to plan for and what to do. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the the numbers of a lot of those. I do know the Rubicon history is 220 and the namings are 240 or th- 340, 340. Mm-hmm. but I don't remember the planning trip. I don't remember that one either. Yeah. Um, and then we have the glue tread trip on the Rubicon, which sure. is a lot of fun. It has a lot of uh, fun info about the trail there too. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, oh my God. Dick. Dick. Dick is good. <laughs> Sounds like one of your MFers wrote that name. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> says great podcast here for the winch when in a pinch. Yep. Now mm-hmm. here for the Yokohama tires. Yup. Uh, and from the lamb, the llama himself, the llama uh, says the show rules. I'm here for the wenches, wenches. Nice. I was told there'd be wenches. What? Oh, wenches, wenches. Oh, got it. Anyways, this podcast is the best. They really crawl over the completion, but seriously, these guys are the best, even though my roommate made me write this. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I wonder if uh, he's seen uh, Caddyshack. I don't know. Maybe. Because they have the llama. The mm. llama in that. Uh, maybe. I thought there was... I'm trying to find... When he dies, find... he has total enlightenment, though. Mm. So he's got the that Dalai going llama? for him. No. John Caddy? John... Cle- what? Sh- John Casey? Casey? Yeah. Is that his name? I don't know. I, I screwed it all up now. <laughs> <laughs> Jason and Chris are going to be highly upset with you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good movie. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one's from Slow Crawler XJ. Says, very entertaining. I truly do enjoy listening to these knuckleheads, even though I don't wheel a Toyota. Fun and interesting topics, great guests, and is very informative about everything related to off roading. Keep up the good work, guys. Thanks, Thank XJ you, owner. Yeah. We have a lot of XJ owners, it seems like. It seems like we have a lot of Jeep owners that listen to the show. We do. Which is too bad. We'll have to. Well, find a way to shut off the show for those that people. Makes sense, though. <laughs> I mean, out if because they want to know about the superior platform. If a, yeah, <laughs> if there's a hundred wheelers, uh-huh. like off-road wheelers, be honest here. Okay. There are a hundred rock crawlers. Rock crawlers. Okay. 
what percentage of that, how many of those do you think are Jeep owners? Probably 80. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to go 70. <laughs> yeah. And then thir- 28 of them are Toyota, Toyota owners. <laughs> and then the remaining 2% are everything else out there. Yeah. Or rock crawling. <laughs> Yeah. specifically. Yeah. If I were to say overlanding, mm-hmm. I would flip those numbers almost all the way around. I I, I would agree. Yeah. If we were going to include just the vehicular two, recreation. 2% are Jeep owners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 30% are is everything else. And then the 70% is Toyota. Yeah. I would agree. So uh, let's see. Who else do we got? We got another one here. I could have sworn that we had another one coming up. I'll have to go back and see if I skipped it for something. But um. Uh, this one's from K cross six, five, one, two. It says pretty cool. Been listening to these guys for the past couple of years while I build my quote unquote Toyota truggy, lots of good information. And they're pretty funny. Met Jimmy at hammers in 2021. He's a lot short. <laughs> shorter than you expected. He's, he's a lot shorter in person. <laughs> Don't let the camera fool you, <laughs> but this is the best podcast. Hands down. <laughs> five, eight, ladies five, eight. and gentlemen. That's not bad. Five, eight. When I wear uh if I have some thick soled shoes on. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a dive back here real quick because but I, I think I sworn. got ultra four Jones. I don't, did we measure who is taller? I thought we did. I thought we did it back to back with you and Kevin. Yeah, um, I don't remember. And I don't he remember. might have me beat. I don't know. It was close though. I remember that. Yeah. It was very close. I don't remember who was shorter though. With, I think I'm five, like five, seven and a half or five, seven and three quarters without mm-hmm. shoes on. Gotcha. Somewhere around that. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who'd be taller. It's a good question. I'm taller than my wife, damn it. So that's all good. That's all that matters. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to find the review. Another review that talks about my height. No, there's another (laughs) one that talks, actually uh, mentions our other podcast. Oh, somebody meant found it? Yes. Really? Yeah. And they mentioned it and I was trying to find it so that we could let everybody know that it actually is out there somewhere. Okay. I still um, want to start another one. I don't see it here. But I don't have the time talking about <laughs> everything that we we're doing earlier. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it here. So uh, I don't know. I could have sworn it was coming up. But anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, that'll do it for reviews. Speaking of podcasts and uh-huh. things that are going on, um, we do have a YouTube channel dedicated to the podcast. Oh, yeah. Right. And I don't know if you guys are YouTube listeners and or and or watchers. It's not doesn't have video of us yet. We are talking about possibly starting video at some point again. We Mm -hmm. did do it a long time ago, Uh, but we were when a long time ago when we were shooting video, we were throwing it on the snail trail four by four YouTube channel. And we found that we were losing subscribers because of the videos that we were putting up (laughs) because people wanted to know information about trucks and not, or, and how to do things with trucks and how to build and things like that, Mm -hmm. where they didn't want to see two dudes talking on a TV screen about a topic. Yeah. Anyway. So we have started a a YouTube channel a while now. I think we already, we have like 50, at least 50 something episodes up on that thing. Um, quite a few. I would love it if you guys would just find it. It's just snail trail four by four podcast. And just subscribe. I don't care if you listen to it, uh, mm-hmm. but we could gain a few more subscribers on that. That'd be fantastic. Um, also, while you're doing that, I did notice that Budget Overland also started a Budget Overland oh, podcast nice. YouTube channel. Cool. So go over there and follow him as well. Benji over there started. They have a Budget Overland YouTube channel, and now they have a Budget Overland podcast YouTube channel. Similar to Snail Trail has a YouTube channel and a Snail Trail 4 by 4 podcast YouTube channel. So they have <laughs> yeah. the same thing kind of going on. Nice. So go, uh, if you're YouTubers, go over there and subscribe to both of those. That'd be fantastic. Cool. Um, and just FYI for anybody out there listening, uh, Benji is about to do, uh, some pretty big more He just deals. released it. He released it on his, uh, he promoted it promoted on it. Instagram mm-hmm. about the email blast. Yes. Yes. Yep. So he's starting kind of a new thing with an email blast to try and do sort of kind of what we're doing with the podcast here, bring vendors and uh, consumers together. Yes. Right. And, and create a win, win, win scenario where vendors make some sales, uh, consumers get some really nice deals on the vendors and uh, they start working with uh, more content creators. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's and, a great idea. He's mm-hmm. got a gr- fantastic following on mm-hmm. his email list. Yep. And he's now able to get 
companies to come on there, like Morflate is, mm -hmm. I think, one of the first people to do this. Mm -hmm. which yeah, is we're kind of testing it out and playing around with a couple of things that he can help streamline his pitch later in the future. Yeah, so. absolutely. And the benefit of it is if you're on his email list and mm -hmm. you get this email, mm -hmm. you know, and it's pretty much saying, hey, this is the giveaway or not a giveaway, but this is the sale this month. Mm -hmm. If we, and I don't know how you guys set it up. I haven't looked at it, but if you, it's a group buy deal for the mm -hmm. most part. Yep. If you're signed up to the newsletter once a month, he's sending out the group buy deal. If you're interested in it, you can, you can put your money where your mouth is. If mm -hmm. you're not, you just don't respond and you yep. can walk away. So yeah, if you're, uh, so I guess a good way to <laughs> segue this in a way is if you're interested in getting a Morphlate, go sign up on Benji's list mm -hmm. <laughs> because they might have some good deals coming up for that. Yep. Uh, that email is coming out Friday. So oh, cool. uh, tomorrow from when you're listening to this episode. So if you want to get in on some Morphlate stuff, some Morphlate deals, it's some pretty sweet deals and it's for site wide, including the new PSI Pro compressors. Ooh, cool. So that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah I think uh, snail armor might be on that eventually. Nice. It's a good platform, man. He, uh, anytime you get content creators that are true, I'm going to say influencers for lack of a better word, but they're, they're true people that have done a good job at creating a community with their listeners. It's a, it's a big win for everybody to get involved Right. With those content creators, um, listeners, vendors, everybody. So other content creators. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, and he does a really good job creating that community, the budget of land community. So yeah, uh, go check that out and get signed up. Uh, if you're looking for more group by deals in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic idea. Yep. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here on the to-do list? Anything? Nothing on my list. No, yeah. I think we're into what in the butt. Nice. Uh, what did you do this weekend? I went and saw Taylor Swift. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got drug to possibly the very best concert I've ever seen in my life. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you been to a pink concert? Uh, I mean, not the color pink, no, the, I have the artist not. pink. Okay. No, uh, <laughs> there but was a lot of pink I the know twos. that pink puts on a fantastic concert. It, uh, the assistant has been to pink and she said it's Circus Olay with singing. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I would imagine that Pink would put on a great, great concert as well. Um, I haven't been to Pink, so I'm, I'm going mm -hmm. with this one's possibly the best concert I've ever been to. Interesting. Uh, it just, I mean, it was a stadium tour, so there was like 75,000 people there. Yeah. Something like that. 50 to 75,000 is the numbers I've heard. You know, we all had those wristbands, which I still, if anybody knows how those damn wristbands work, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So what they are is it's just... There's a different color LEDs in this oh, wristband. Uh -huh. And then the wristband glinks and glows and does things at different times. But it's also geolocated. Like it knows where you are in the stadium. Yeah. Like at one point it did like a wave all the way around the stadium. Huh. And it knew, so it knows where you're located and when it needs to turn on or off. But it's not assigned seating? But it's not a... No, well, it Free is ticket? assigned t seating, but it's not, but it, they're handed at random when you walk uh, in. Oh, interesting. Right? So you walk in and you just grab one. So yeah. they don't know where, you, the, that thing doesn't know where you're seating. Gotcha. Yeah. And so somehow it knows where you are inside of the stadium with 50,000 people. Yeah. And it knows when to blink on time to the light show that's going on huh. in the, with all those people. I wonder if, um, because the, the military has a radio communication setup that, um, is essentially like a mesh network off of each individual soldier. So a, they, each individual soldier has a transceiver on their packs. So if somebody needs to talk to somebody else, you can, they can, they can, you can, it just goes, it jumps, yeah. the signal jumps from soldier to soldier, like a mesh network. Right. Yeah. So I wonder if these kind of work the same way. So you just need to know where one is sure, and then it can maybe jump the signal around the stadium to all 75,000 and figure out where everything is Yeah, and then run the programs from there. Yeah, it's possible. Huh. It's uh, at one point it looked like there was a sort of like a, a breathing scenario going on where like. Huh. It was started in at the floor and then it went up, up the and entire out. stadium, you know, uh -huh. and I'm just like, why well, I'm more like mesmerized <laughs> by like, you know, like she, Taylor's having a great concert and there's tons of dancing going on and the singing's fantastic. But I'm like, how are they doing this? Like, <laughs> I'm like, this is so wild. I'm so techie in that mm -hmm. aspect, but 
She played for three and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. I don't, she played some 40 some odd songs. Jeez. Yeah. And, you know, singing and dancing. She did like seven costume changes in the middle of it, <laughs> if not more. Uh-huh. And yeah, it was, I mean, it was a great, great concert. I don't know. There's a few concerts I've been to that are really, that have been really good. Stevie Wonder, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Bruno Mars, really good. Like Bruno Mars knew how to put on a show and, mm-hmm. you know, captivated the audience and had part audience participation. But Taylor had 50,000 people doing it. Yeah. And she played for three and a half hours and kept the attention the entire time. Mm-hmm. And she has enough songs and hits to do that. Mm-hmm. So it was really, really cool. Um, let's see. So we drove down. The concert we went to was on Saturday. We bombed down at like noon or one o'clock on um, Saturday day, uh, the assistant was mad at me cause I was trying to get my state state taxes or sales taxes uh-huh. completed. Yep. And she's like, we got to go. I'm like, I need to finish this. Yeah. <laughs> like, we can't, I can't miss this deadline. I can't miss this <laughs> deadline, which is Monday. Mm-hmm. So got that dialed in, which was sort of a pain. That's such a pain in the ass. Yeah. They told me I need to pay quarterly now. So that's going to yeah. be fun. <laughs> uh, let's see. So then we drove down there. Oh, get this. So we went, you know, those like, um, hotels.com or Travelocity Mm -hmm. or whatever. We Googled a hotel in the area that's walking distance. Did I tell you this? You're kind of smirking at me. Good luck. Okay. Well, we got it. We got one. You got one? And it was like 130 bucks and we're like, sweet. Yeah. Okay. But it went to some company that I don't, it was like, I don't remember what the name of it was. And it was not a normal like one, like not, it wasn't a big name one. Okay. So we register or we checked into the, or we uh, logged in and got the hotel room. And then about five days before the concert, they canceled it on us. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they responded and said something like, sorry, we, that room is no longer available and canceled the room. <laughs> I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah. You sold us a room yeah. and then you canceled it. Like I was, I was a little bitter. I'm like, I'm I haven't done it yet. I still want, I'm going to write them all like a one star review, you know, and just be like, yeah, we ordered this hotel room Mm -hmm. and that before a concert. And then they canceled the hotel room saying that it's no longer available. And now we had, we had to struggle to find a hotel room that we purchased months ago. Yeah. So did they, did the prices go up all of a sudden? They were, they they were up. All the prices were like 250 to $300. And that one was 130. Gotcha. And so that's my guess is they were like, oh, we sold this room for way under price. We let's cancel it and sell it to somebody else for more money. Mm-hmm. But still, that's that's not ethically right. Yeah, that should be against the Better Business Bureau. Yeah. Like you should contact BBB about that. But. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. we <laughs> so what's funny is we went and stayed in the same hotel. With, I think it's a quality in that we stayed at that for Coldplay when we went and watched Coldplay. Mm-hmm. And when we rented the room for Coldplay, it was a little over a hundred bucks. When we went there for Taylor Swift, it was a three hundred dollars <laughs> for a quality <laughs> in. Yeah, but it's walking distance, so we didn't like one. We Ubered like halfway to the stadium because they don't let you to like all the Uber all. Yeah, it doesn't let you go all the way in, uh, which is a lot of my problems in life. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> okay. at the end of the concert, we could. It was a mile back to the hotel. So we didn't have to pay for parking. We didn't have to deal with parking. We didn't have to do any of that. So it was kind of nice to just, you can just stroll home. Mm -hmm. They allow you to bring water bottles into the concert open or not opened. Okay. And so we, uh, filled a water bottle with vodka Uh (laughs) and (laughs) went to the concert. And then I, you know, we went and bought a lemonade and Uh we, I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, like pull out these water bottles. And I, Pulled out a water bottle and I like took a sniff and I was like, that one's water. Pulled out another one and water, water. I forgot to freaking put the vodka bottle into the bag. No. <laughs> oh, no. The assistant was so pissed at me. She's like, what? I'm like, I'm going to go buy you a drink. You want a drink? <laughs> like, so I had to spend like a hundred dollars in drinks that night. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Like it truly was 17 bucks. It was wow. insane. But uh, yes, it totally left like 16 ounces of vodka in, in a water bottle at the hotel room. Like, Oh man, I don't know how I did that. It was right next to the vodka bottle too. I was like, I don't know why I just didn't put it in at first. Yeah. But, 
So I forgot that. But the concert was fantastic. We walked back to the hotel rooms, went to bed, woke up, relaxed, went, ate the basic continental breakfast and bombed home. So that was Saturday and into Sunday. Sunday, I uh, did some stuff for the Rovicon. Okay. Uh, which is coming up in uh, this weekend or next weekend soon. Yeah. It's coming up pretty quick. Okay. So yeah, so I did some things for the Rovicon on the Etcher. And then, uh, yeah, I found out that Greg and Donnie are, were going to be up in town. And so I drove back to the shop, grabbed the mugs, and then went and met them at Hustle Nuts's place. Oh, and nice. Dropped everything off for them, visited with them for a little bit, and then uh, went back to the, the house and started editing Monday's podcast. Nice. So well, that was my weekend. <laughs> um, besides that, I've been spending a lot of time prepping the house, doing work on the house. Um, I did, I don't know if I told you, but I ended up sanding or I scraped off the roof in the front room, Mm -hmm. flooded it. I went and rented a sander from Home Depot, which happened to be a flex power tools sander. (laughs) Okay. Right. So I got to use a flex power tools sander. The sander worked great. It had some like foam pad thing that's in like that kind of, has the sanding pad on it okay, and it was ripped. And so, which I think it's made to be a disposable part anyway, because it's foam, but they rented it to me that way. (laughs) And so like every three minutes, this thing came, like I would pull it off the ceiling because it wasn't really uh, sanding sanding, Mm -hmm. and the thing would fly off (laughs) and I ran like with the Frisbee. (laughs) And then I'd have to take the thing apart, screw it all back together, tighten it. And I was like, this is silly. So when I returned it, I was like, purposely left it off Yeah, when I returned it. And I said, this thing is, was broken. It's ripped. It's ripped in a few places now because I had to keep using it. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to let you know. And they're like, Oh yeah, that's, that's no problem. That's normal. I, my guess is they just put it back on and stuck it on the shelf. <laughs> but so I sanded everything. Then I um, came back the next day and I textured that, that entire room. I textured some things upstairs that needed texturing. And then yesterday on Monday, I painted the ceiling, the primer Mm -hmm. and it looks great. Nice. It's nice. Yeah. So we're, uh, happy with how that came out. Cool. Um, we spent some time painting some of the trim upstairs because we're getting carpet today. And then we only have a few more small things in some of the bedrooms like doors and blinds. And uh, I don't know, maybe some smaller things that I can't even think of at the moment. And then some of the bedrooms and stuff are all done. Then next week, uh, we're getting some hardwood floor refinished. And then the office and this guest bedroom will be done. Nice. Yeah. So we're we're getting close here. Upstairs is almost is getting to a point where it's almost complete. Nice. Yeah. So that's that's nice. And then but we haven't done a lot of stuff down. Well, we haven't started even really painting downstairs. (sighs) We've painted the ceilings in a lot of it, except for the place, the kitchen and the front room and hallway. So we still have all the walls to paint and a bunch of stuff to do downstairs that um, still is on our list to do. So, Mm. but upstairs, it'll be nice once we actually kind of finish a room Mm -hmm. Then we can like start checking like that one's done. We don't have to concentrate on that anymore. (laughs) Yeah. But. Yeah. So that's, we've been doing a lot of that and I've been able to help out at that house because I've been back ordered on Tacoma panels. So mm-hmm. I have had free time. Nice. <laughs> but I told the assistant, like, I'm going to pick up panels today. So tomorrow I'm not going to be at the house working at all. Cause I'm going to be catching up on all my panels. Yeah. She was like, Oh, okay. I'm like, no, that <laughs> like that comes first. Yeah. I need to be able to pay for the projects too. <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, so that was, uh, that's been my week in a nutshell and, uh, a great concert. I mean, yeah, definitely top three for sure. So mm-hmm. it was pretty, even if you're not like a Taylor Swift fan, I had a buddy at the concert from college. He's like a hardcore punk rock fan. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's been to a lot of concerts in his life, I know. And he was like, this was the best concert I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I did not expect that from Interesting. you. Interesting. Yeah. I expected some like dropkick Murphys and, yeah. you know, um, I don't know, somebody else concert on the East Coast or whatever, <laughs> you know, uh, for his favorite concert, but he's like, yeah, no, I mean, she just puts on a great show. Mm -hmm. You can't argue with that. Nice. She, and I heard she makes 13 million per show. Wow. Yeah. That must be nice. She made it. She had a show on Friday night and a show on Saturday night. So she made $26 million. And that's profit or revenue. No, I heard that's what she's making. Oh, geez. So it's profit. That's after all the expenses or I think so. Huh? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Yeah. But, 
I tried to do some very basic math from mm-hmm. what, like, cause we ended up paying, I think our tickets were like 250 bucks. That's not bad. No, we, we didn't have the best of seats, but we actually, we had decent seats for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we were up a ways. We weren't in the nosebleeds. We were like, you know, there's three tiers kind of in there and mm-hmm. we were on the second tier about almost all the way to the top, mm-hmm. like three quarters of the way to the top. And on uh, almost, it, I know what we, the assistant thought we were going to be behind the stage. Like we we're uh-huh. so far on the edge, but we were, we we're actually quite flush to the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they weren't the best of seats, but they are a decent price. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, some of the floor seats, were, I don't even know how much those were, <laughs> Yeah, but just for my ticket, she put, it was $50 an hour that she played. Wow. So, and if you here, I'll just do some basic math real quick. Um, <laughs> Cause if there were, 50,000 people, let's just say, mm-hmm. in the stadium. I'll just times it by $250. That's $12.5 million right there. Yeah. And that's not the price <laughs> yeah, of all the tickets. The yeah. So I think $13 million was her take home. Probably. Not to mention renting yeah. the stadium, how much, you know, everything costs, the pyrotechnics, there was fireworks, there was flames, there was mm-hmm. all the electronics, there was, yeah. you know, everything going on. So I think. 13 million was her take home. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but she freaking deserves it, man. Yeah. She's been killing it. She's, mm-hmm. you know, she's an Uber star mm-hmm. and she could play for three and a half hours and keep everybody entertained and have a good show. Yeah. So I think that's good for her. Who yep. knows? People will pay for entertainment. They will. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. I sat there for a split second going like, how do we turn snail trail into this? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think they, we, I don't think we can fill if there was all the off-roaders in the world, I don't think we could fill that stadium. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what would we do? Like show how to build a truck in like a t- few hours and yeah. fill a stadium and joke about it? Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's a way. <laughs> no. Though the um, King of the Hammers gets about that draw. Yeah. I mean, they, there's a, there's, I mean, they had over a hundred thousand people last year. Did they really? Yeah. Dang. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be, there is the, that in the off-road community, but not Mm -hmm. for a, like a stadium show. Yeah. Unless you were like monster truck driving. Yeah. And say there's a hundred thousand people out there, but probably only like 5,000 people paid for tickets. (laughs) So yeah, (laughs) there is that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And camping and entrance (laughs) tickets aren't 250 bucks. Mm. So twenty five dollar. You're right. Yep. Exactly. So cool. So Anyways, what have you been doing? Um, my weekend was fairly tame. Um, I'm trying to get everything ready on my end for the Forerunner and Bronco. Right. I'm yes. trying to get the Bronco ready to run the Rubicon end of September. Okay. So there's a couple things in the works um, that I'm kind of waiting on, and uh, one of them is to put 37s on it. So yeah. I have the 37 XAT Geolanders from Yokohama. Um, yep. Yep. And they're, they're a phenomenal tire. Um, so far, I mean, I run the, the 33s on the F-150, you run the 33s pretty much on the Tacoma. Yeah. Um, uh, Dimitri has started running that XAT and a lot of his like daily driver vehicles. So it's a, it's an awesome tire. Um, I just need to figure out what wheels to put it on. So the Bronco wheels that come with it are, uh, like a positive offset wheel. Okay. Uh, six on five and a half lug pattern, oh, but a okay. different hub bore. It's a smaller uh, hub bore. No, sorry. Just... Yeah. The, the Bronco is a smaller hub bore than the Toyota six on five and a half Got wheels. It. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So if I want to put the race lines off of the forerunner onto the Bronco, which would give me a, uh, it's nine and a half wide, four and a half back spacing. So it would give me a negative half half inch yeah, on each side. offset. Um, so anyways, if I did uh, the race lines, I would have a negative offset. So the tires are going to stick out a little bit more. Yep. And, uh, I need, uh, to run hub spacers, which are different from wheel spacers. So, okay. They're essentially an aluminum ring that goes on the hub bore of the, um, the WMS, um, and then fills the gap between the hub and your wheel. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it just is like a little, little ring. It's a 20, thing that goes over the lugs mm. that is. It hub- doesn't go over the hub lugs at all. Oh, it doesn't? No. Interesting. Oh, yeah. man. That, it kind of gets weird. It's like, it's like, 
pressed on, but you can hammer it on. You don't have to press it with like a press. Right. But then does it stick out a way farther than the back of your wheel mount surface? It does. Yes. So then when you mount your wheels, there's going to be a gap between the wheel mount surface and your rim? No. Where's the space taken up? How does it, is it just a thing that fits inside like a sleeve? Yeah. It's like a sleeve for your hub. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't go on the wheel mount surface at all. Okay. So it gonna, it's more attaches to your, the, the hub that, um, wheels go over. Interesting. Along with but your, lugs. so your rim is what, like how thick at the wheel mount at the hub area? Um, at the hub, the race lines are fairly thick, two inches, inch and a half, oh. two inches. Okay. Yeah. But it, so would the sleeve be that entire length or does it need to just be as it's much shorter? As, it's about a half inch. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe, huh. maybe a little more. I've never seen these. Oh, I should have brought them then. Um, yeah. I got a, I got a set of them Okay. to go from the Toyota OD. Um, so the, the ring right. is the Toyota bore on the OD and the ID is the Bronco bore. Yes. So, um, they go in there and it just makes the wheels, uh, be a non lug centric wheel now, um, Correct. because they can physically attach to the hub or be supported by the hub. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, it makes the wheels now hub centric. Cool. So anyways, um, I ha- I got a set of those only like 30 bucks on Amazon. Okay. So, um, I got those and, um, but then I realized that if I run those, like the race lines are pretty much set up for, um, like selectable hubs. So they're, they're passed through in the center. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, most wheels that are passed through in the center like that, they have caps for them, right? These little plastic, um, caps that look good. Yeah. And so the race lines don't have those. Right. So I need to take the Bronco wheels off and look and see if there's anything back there that's going to make it look bad. Okay. Because this is going to be a show vehicle with what we're yeah doing Everything to the Bronco. Everything you're planning to do. Yeah. yeah. So um, I need to take the Bronco wheels off and see if it's going to look bad. Or um, I'm debating on just going to Ford and getting the beadlock rings for the Bronco wheels. Okay. So um, that's what I need to do for that. Are there no caps on the Bronco wheels currently? They're built into the wheel. Mm. Yeah. So they're not like removable caps like you see on most aftermarket wheels. Did you pull one off and see if you could press it out? No, not yet. Backwards. Yeah. I haven't pulled the wheel off yet. Yeah. I would. I mean, it looks like it's all one forged wheel. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it is. I've seen ones that are, have like, there's gaps sort of in the back and Mm -hmm. they're just pressed in from the back and the wheel, the wheel mounting surface holds it in place. Yeah. So I, might be worth pulling a wheel off just to see. Yeah, exactly. So I need to pull a wheel off, uh, which will give me a good opportunity to play with the flex half inch impact. Finally. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, I need to do that, but I did Kermit's wheels. Okay. Since Kermit is going to an eight lug. Yes. Eight on one seventy. I needed to get new wheels. So I got new wheels from Morgan over at sidetracked off road. Uh, the machined finish, uh, MG alloy wheels that he cool. has. Yeah. And, um, which are phenomenal price. They're like 250, 275 bucks per wheel for beadlock wheels. And wow. they look great. <laughs> so it's a great price. Yeah. So I think the race signs are like 400 and 450 bucks yeah. per wheel. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So, uh, went over, said hi to Morgan last week, got the wheels, um, and then got, uh, and put them all in. Uh, okay. so I had to dismount the race lines from the 40 inch Yokohamas. That sucked. Yeah. They did not want to let go. I bet. So like I've, I've I had a really, really, <laughs> really hard time with yours, with my 37s. That's right. Putting in your inner bead locks. Yeah. Dude, fuck those, man. Uh, what I should have done is had the shop only put one bead on yep. or only put the tire over the rim. And mm-hmm. then I take and put all the inner stuff done, but I needed the rims solo so I could drill all the holes and everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So when I, when I did mine, I had, took the wheel, like the Toyos up to the shop with the, my steel rims. Mm-hmm. And then I just had them take them off and recycle the Toyos. And I took the rims back mm-hmm. and then, yeah, I had to literally to get that, which is the stupidest idea, I think, but it worked. Um, I connected the engine hoist. Uh huh. I put the rim de- or the tire down and the rim on top or no, I put the, t- yeah, I put the rim down the tire over the rim 
the engine hoist on top of the tire. <laughs> And, and then, then the rim up and then attached yeah, a strap or something to the rim and pulled it up into the tire. Interesting. So I didn't really have too many issues getting the, the, the wheel and the tire together. Oh, okay. I had troubles getting the, them apart, the race off lines the bead. off of the 40 inch Yoko's. Oh mm. yeah. They, they, the beads would not let go the inside beads, right? Did they glue the backside. Them? No, they weren't glued. Um, they just, didn't want to let go. Yeah. So I've in the past, I've been able to get tires separated by um, driving over them with the truck. And then just, they pop the beat off that way by yeah. driving over them. But it's kind of dangerous because it likes to flip the rim up and yeah. scratches <laughs> the rim too. Um, I've done it with the high lift method where yeah. you put the high lift on the bead and then jack it up with a vehicle Yeah. and the vehicle, the weight pushes the bead down. You do right. that four or five times. Mm -hmm. I've also found a fun trick using ratchet straps and a floor jack. <laughs> okay. That works pretty well. Yeah. I did that the last time I did it and that worked easy. It's safe. It's a hell of a lot safer than trying to use a high lift or driving over the tire. Um, but none of those three methods worked. I couldn't get any of them to get the bead off of the fucking race lines. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So finally, after struggling on one wheel for about two hours, I said, screw this. And I called up America's tire <laughs> discount tire and everywhere but California. And, um, I was like, Hey, I have four tires and wheels, uh, 40 inch tires. And, um, I just need them separated. Like I just need them, the rim pulled out of the wheel or pulled out of the tire. And they're like, do you have bead locks on them? I was like, I, there, they are beadlock wheels, but I have all that disassembled. The beadlocks are off. You guys don't have to touch that at all. It's just the inside bead that won't let go. I can't get it off with my normal methods. And they're like, yeah, no problem. Bring it on down 24 bucks a tire. So, okay, cool. So I took it on down to them, <laughs> picked them up at five o'clock when they closed <laughs> on yeah. Saturday. Um, and then everything went together super quick. Uh, everything I had the, from having the wheels, beadlock rings, all the hardware prepped and the tires sitting there. Um, so from that point to put the wheel in the tires, put the beadlocks on and get them all torqued down properly. Um, it took me, let's see from eight thirty AM until 10, was it 10 50 AM? Okay. No, 10 15 AM. So a little under two hours wow. to do all of them. That's impressive. Yeah. I was uh, proud of myself. I was like, yeah, that worked out well. Were you just doing Ugga Duggas or did you actually torque them? I torqued them all. Yeah. Okay. Torqued everything down to 25 foot pounds. Wow. So new bolts. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was all new, all new wheels. So new wheels, new oh, rings, for new the, bolts. Got it. For the yeah. um, Bronco wheels. For the oh, for the for eight the lines runners. for the yeah. yeah sorry yeah I, I'm following <laughs> along <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah did it all under just under two hours for the four uh, tires and wheel combo um in the future did you use the angle on the torque wrench did not oh. no nah, I kind of did I just when I did the so I went down with the quarter inch impact on all sure. the bolts went around three times. And then the first round around doing crisscross with the torque wrench, I went to 35 foot pounds. Okay. And then, um, from there I dropped it down to 25 and then just went around until everything was tight. Okay. Got it. So it takes me eight, eight rounds Jeez. between the quarter inch impact and the torque wrench to get around the wheel to make sure everything's tightened down. <laughs> Did you, have you ever tried to just do it with torque angle one time around and see if it works? I mean, that's essentially what the 35 was when you do torque angle, um, you're torquing everything down, uh, essentially past the regular torque, the static torque Yes. and you're doing the torque angle. So you're going, uh, depending on the fastener, you're going another half turn around, whatever it is. Yeah. So that's essentially what the 35 foot pounds was. Okay. So I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just curious. I, I don't know if that's as a, is the exact equivalent to torque angle. I, you, what you're saying is you mm -hmm. went a little more over 25, mm -hmm. right? Torque angle, right. Is the difference of the, you're getting the torque of the head hitting the, the head of the bolt hitting the object you're tightening it against. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you tighten a little bit more to engage all the threads. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, you, you're saying you're, you're guessing that you're doing that fully by going to 35. Um, yeah. I mean, by on the first times around the mm -hmm. thing with beadlock wheels is as you zoot down 
um, one of the hardwares, yeah. one of the fasteners, um, the ones next to it that you just did are now loose. Right. Um, right. And that's, I'm, and I, you're answering the question. I'm just curious if you actually would have done torque angle if it is tight all the way around. But I think you, what you're saying is by going to 35, it's still not 25 all the way around. Yeah. It's yeah. You're not even close to the torque setting yet. The 25 torque. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, it would be so cool if you just had a torque wrench that had torque angle and you went one time around and mm-hmm. it was like butter. Yeah. It done. doesn't work that way. Oh God. Don't say it like it's like butter. All the MFRs are going to be laughing right now as they listen to this. But I'll they, explain to you later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so I, yeah, I think if you do torque angle, torque vector, uh, not torque vector, that's cars, torque angle, um, after you get to the 25 foot pounds, then yeah, that's, it's, it's awesome. It works really well. Um, but I think that these rings are supposed to be torqued to like 18 foot pounds. Mm, so okay. 25 <laughs> with the, with the, for an 18 torque of angle. Yeah, maybe sure. <laughs> um, it's just 25 is the lowest that my uh, torque wrench will read to, mm. or at least alert to got it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you so, don't have a three eights. No, I gave it away. Uh, yeah. I have the half inch and the quarter and the half in, or the quarter goes up to 25, right? It goes to 20. Oh, yeah. It goes to 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I guess I could have used it to do 18, but I like 25 for That'll my, work. my beadlock rings. Um, yeah, but, uh, I was very impressed with the race lines and the Yokohamas <laughs> not wanting to separate the bead. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but so. I've, I was running on those, on the Yokohamas. I was running like five PSI mm-hmm. and I had one of my, um, internal beadlocks that wasn't working mm-hmm. and it, I didn't blow a bead. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been mm-hmm. shocked about that. Mm-hmm. And so I've kind of like, so with my inner B locks, sh- I can probably go lower than five PSI probably, and it'll hold mm-hmm. because if it's holding, okay, granted it was a rear, uh, one of the rear tires, not a front mm-hmm. tire, mm-hmm. uh, front tire would be different cause it, you probably you're steering. Yep. But I was, I was shocked yeah. and I was, because it was holding on to a steel rim at five PSI Mm-hmm. No problem. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's some pretty, I mean, I'm getting the Yokohamas onto the sidetracked off road wheels. Um, took a little bit They're They're a tight fit. Yes. <laughs> so I, that it, everybody yeah. was like, just hold that rim over your head and slam it down <laughs> into the tire. I could not do it. Wow. Like I tried that. I have a video of me probably spending five minutes doing that. Wow. <laughs> Slamming it. Lo- <laughs> like putting Dawn dishwashing soap. Really? On, and you still couldn't yeah, get it? Yeah. And still couldn't get it all like together. So wow. yeah, I, that's when I went, I was like revor- re- reverted to, uh, using the, uh, the engine hoist to get yeah. it, <laughs> get it in there. But yeah, it yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah. To get the rims in, I found if I put, um, a tire, under on the bottom and mm-hmm. then put the next tire on top of it and then, uh, soap up the tire mm-hmm. and then drop the rim in sideways and then stand on it and kind of stand on it and make it slide in yeah, like a slip almost, together, slip together. Mm-hmm. It works. Um, I tried that too. Uh, I tried that too and it still wouldn't yeah. go. Wow. That's impressive. Um, so anyways, yeah, I had a good time with the, the beadlock install. Um, yeah. And, uh, the, the wheels and those, I love the way they look, man. Oh yeah. They look good. They're okay. on the warehouse. I'll show you when, before we leave. Yeah. Um, so they look good. They came out great. Um, and the rear suspension is getting put together on Kermit. Um, a lot of the work, uh, apparently Ori, I just found out likes to work on the weekends. He pretty much works Monday, uh, Friday through Monday. Oh yeah. Okay. So he takes care of his kid Tuesday through Wednesday or Tuesday through Thursday. Got it. For the most part. So, um, I get updates Monday about what he did over the weekend. And, um, the rear three link is pretty much all mocked up. The front three link frame brackets for the lowers are mocked up. Um, and then he did the pan hard. So, um, yeah, I'm a little concerned about the, uh, the lower shock mounts. Yeah. On I the saw rear. This. Uh-huh. They, they hang down, um, which I'm not too thrilled about. And I knew that was going to happen. Um, you're going to be like a Jeep now. So but you're, you're yeah, fine. I'm just going to be like a Jeep or a Bronco now anyway. Yeah. So I just have to be more conscious of where rocks go underneath me. Um, but I think that we have a plan to eliminate those altogether Ooh. in the near future. 
Intense secret secret. Intense secret secret <laughs> yeah. tease tease for everybody out there. Um, I won't give you any more information until that becomes a reality though. Good idea. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, that's all coming together. And I think, um, this next weekend is going to be buttoning up the rear suspension. Cool. And mm-hmm. then moving on to the front and nice. cutting that, cutting that frame off in the front. Finally, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Is he just going to suspend the engine in place? Like how is he? Mm-hmm. And then just build the frame around it from there. Pretty much. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be fun. Um, I think in the future, next time I try and do uh, wheels and tires, I'm going to separate the wheels from the tires here at the warehouse using the forklift. Yeah. And I'll find a way to like strap everything down to the strap, the tire to the ground. Just bolt it through it. Yeah. Just bolt, put a <laughs> bolt right through and then put a <laughs> um, glue tread on the side. Yeah, exactly. And then use Patch the forklift hole. to just pull the wheel exactly. up out of the tire. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, that'll be fun to figure out when I get there. So that was you my need weekend. To build like a small cage that you can bolt to the concrete. I think that's why I'm that slide the tire under. Mm -hmm. And then when you pull it up, when you pull the wheel up, it's going to pull the tire up against the small cage. Uh, That's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about. So, or you just take it to, uh, America's tire for 24 bucks a tire. Yeah. Which really, I mean, would they mount it on the next ones on? No, they, they won't mount the back feed on beadlocks. They told me they wouldn't do it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Or take it to Dimitri at Stellar Built, yep. and they'll help. Or go out. down there. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I had a. It was a good weekend. It got warm again, um, and then uh, next weekend coming up is going to be some fun stuff. So good because my yeah. next weekend is baseboard party. Yay! Yes. Now that the carpet's <laughs> in, uh huh, baseboards can go on. Nice. So yeah, thanks, Dylan. <laughs> you know the best part about this, Dylan, the the gentleman that I'm not allowed to see or hang out mm-hmm. with anymore, mm-hmm. uh, gave me some baseboards, mm-hmm. and I didn't have to see him or, or hang out with him at all to get them. Perfect. I know. That works One great. of your MFers brought him to the shop, and I got him <laughs> right over there, and I can pick him up. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, that worked out great. Uh, I love it. Networking at its finest. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeping everybody's uh, health in check here. Yeah. And my gout yeah. at the minimum. Yeah. It's like you go within like, I don't know, 50 feet of Dylan and you're, you start getting crystals in your ankles. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> they just remember his voice and it just sends like crystals down to my big toe or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, man. Well, cool. Uh, looking forward to hearing about the fun stories from the weekend. And uh, we have a fun interview for you guys coming up on Monday. Absolutely. So. And if you want to get a hold of us and ask us any questions about uh, baseboard parties or how to actually install bead locks, you can do that on Instagram. I'm over at snail trail four by four. Tyler's at four by four Toyota Tyler. You can email us Jimmy or Tyler at snail trail four by four dot com. Now I'm thinking I really should just create an email that says Jimmy or Tyler on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and you can always phone in like Donnie did today and tell us about green laning or tell us about off-roading in your area at 916-345-4744. Also, don't forget about any of the merch or anything else we got going on on all of our websites, Snail Trail 4x4 and Morphlate all have merch. So check those out. And yeah, thanks for listening. Sounds good, man. Uh, with that, any final words for everybody out there? Are you going to be able to do Sierra Trek in a off-road rig? I have a Bronco. And with that, my friends, keep crawling. I got one for you. I'm ready. Are you sure? No. No? You don't seem in a very humorous mood today. Uh huh. Did you hear about the woman who couldn't stop collecting magazines? Who could not stop collecting magazines? No, I did not. Yeah, she has issues. Mm, lots of issues. Lots of them. <laughs> lots of issues. <laughs>